Hello and welcome to another instalment of The Journey. My name's Matt Griffith and I'm really looking forward to this because our next guest is the General Manager of Regent Cinemas in Albury, uh, Kelly Davis, and Tally the Jack Russell joins you as well, our first <laughs> animal guest on The Journey. Oh, thanks Hello, for having Kel. us. Hello. Now, Tally's going to be very quiet. You've trained her very well. She's on your lap at the moment if you're listening to this and not seeing it visually. And she's already half asleep. Yep. She's given up. She knows there's no ball here, so <laughs> she'll have a relaxing time with us. Ball is life for that, yes, that dog, it's fair it to is. say, isn't it? It is. Uh, all right. So the gist is, Kelly, is we're going to follow your journey um, to where you are uh, today and you've been a big part of the history of uh, the latter history of Regent Cinemas and we'll get to that coming up very soon but first off we always like to kick off with your heritage to the region. Okay. So were you born and bred here or did you come over here from somewhere else? I wasn't. I was born in Sydney. My my family, we um, they grew up in Sydney and from Sydney and I moved here when I was five, six years old. My dad was a methods engineer and he got a job at Borg Warner back then. <laughs> oh, Borg Warner, making the yeah, gearboxes yes. for Fords yes. up so at Lavington. He, yeah, he designed the machines that built the gearboxes. So he moved down here for work-life balance. He, he never saw his kids. He had three kids. I've got two older brothers. And he moved down here to have a better life balance with his family. Um, went to Thaguna Primary, established in West Albury and, yeah, yeah, so I've, I've, I've been here since I was, I was five, so I'm very much a local. Five, so <laughs> Grew yeah, you up here. Yeah. remember much of Sydney. I no, just flashbacks of it, but definitely a lot of boring drives up that highway when I was young in the middle seat because I wasn't allowed to sit on the window because I was the youngest um, with my brothers up to see family in Sydney twice, three times a year. Yeah, yeah. I think if you've you moved here uh, when you were five, I think you yeah. can safely call yourself Thanks. a local. Yeah, I do. I, th I think you've, you've, you've made the <laughs> I've cut. established that, yeah, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've known each other for the good part of, well, 15 years, yeah. I, I reckon, maybe even, actually more than that because I, I so. moved over in 2006. So, yeah, it's, it's getting on for 18 or so Gosh, so years. But you sound so old, man. I know, I know. <laughs> but we've never actually sat down and, and really had no. a, a, a chat. We've always excited. just been present yeah. in our lives. Quick quick update on the, on what's happening in our lives at the moment. But, yeah, no, I'm, lo I'm looking forward to this. Okay, so um, you were five when you moved over. Mm -hmm. You, you um, went to Thaguna, did you say? Yeah, Thaguna, Thaguna just for a year. Um, Mum and Dad wanted to see where to settle. And so we, um, they bought a house in West Albury. And, yeah, so from Thaguna went to West Albury Primary and um, then to Albury High. Okay. So um, at what point did you start to fall in love with movies? Because of everyone I know, I mean, and quite <laughs> rightly as well, I mean, you do work at Regent Cinemas. It's been yeah. a big part of your life. But you absolutely adore movies. It's like a, a passion industry for you. So yeah. you obviously ended up in an area you wanted to. When did you first start to fall in love with I think, movies? do you know what? I remember my first trip to um, Regent Cinemas and that was as a family to watch Crocodile Dundee. And in original cinema one, and um, before the Renault, I could even point out what seats we sat in. And I remember my dad bringing a cushion for me to sit on because he didn't know who was going to sit in front. And just the just the awe of watching this big screen um, really really got to me. And then I always asked, "What do you want to do for your birthday? I want to go to the movies. Can we go to the movies this weekend?" And um, yeah, so I annoyed my parents a lot going to to movies and wanting to as a little as a little girl but then you know the holidays and all that my my brothers forced me to watch these epic <laughs> um epic stories such as star wars and um back to the future and growing up with these classics that just i just fell in love and then i wanted more and i got into you know finally found a voice and um, decided to watch what I wanted to watch. And as a as a teenage girl, it was girls just want to have fun and <laughs> dirty dancing. And it's just stayed. I just love the escape and and watching stories unfold. And did your parents, uh, obviously, that they, they had no issue with you watching a, a lot of movies? Did they, did they feel that passion that you had at the time or um, just was it a... a no, I think they liked that, um, you know, it's, it was a good interest to have. There's a lot of naughty interests out there you could have. And my brothers gave them a fair run. 
<laughs> and being the third child, I, I was always left to my own devices sometimes and, and that was a good escape for me. Yeah, yeah. So they had their hands full with the yeah, others. Yeah, they did, definitely. And then you just got to watch movies. Yeah, which yeah. Which is fantastic. Love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so um, you you said that you went to Albury High. High. Yes, yeah. 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 Um, have you left the area at all? Have you lived anywhere else? No, I haven't. I really, when I when I turned 19 and started earning money, my real aim was to earn money and go overseas. So I've had a lot of overseas trips and, you know, two months in America and two months in Europe and um, visiting Asia and um, just going, What when's my next trip? And working hard and saving money and then going and exploring the world. And I love that. So it was always nice to come home. I'd move out with friends and then I'd save money and then I'd move back in with mum and dad so I could save more to go overseas. And, um, yeah, that, that was just what I like to do. Well, the Europe one is an absolute cracker. We'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, I've been there a few times now, you did, yeah. You did something extraordinary, though, I didn't did. you, about 10 years Best ago. Best thing in we'll, my life. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But um, when did you first get involved with... With Regent Cinemas, how did that well, all come about? Well, it's quite funny. I have always gone to the movies, and I managed a Nirvana surf shop in Dean Street for about seven years. And I went overseas, <laughs> and I came back, and I wanted to try something new. And I didn't know what because the the pressure of managing staff and a shop and 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 all of that had really gotten to me. And I just wanted a no brainer job. <laughs> And a friend of mine was a manager, just a duty manager at the cinema at the time. And she goes, oh, we're looking for another one. It's really good. You just go to work and you go home and you don't have to think about it. And I'm like, that's the kind of job I want. And so I applied and got the job as a duty manager. And then six months later, I moved into a sales role there selling the advertising for the cinema. And... Then I was right, you know, I'd had a six months break. I was right back into, yeah, the, the rigours of, of fun advertising and sales and, and marketing. So, yeah, there was a very small break. But once I got into the <laughs> cinema, I just fell in love with it. Can you give us a, a, a very um, a short, concise <laughs> version of the history of Regent Cinemas? Yeah. Because, I mean, it's it, it's obviously been a big part of, uh, of border life for yes. so many people. Yes. So I so opened as a cinema and a theatre. So um, a lot of theatre shows there in the original. Um, the building was built in 1926, opened in 1927, and um, was, was in a family of, I can't think of his name now, and I even looked at it because I knew we were going to ask me this question. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, and then Hoyt's moved to Aubrey in the 70s yeah, um, yeah. in Olive Street. and So then, at that point it was just owned by a family. Yeah, yeah. And um, it it had the theatre and it had the shows. So it was live theatre as well as cinema. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and it had the beautiful, I'm not sure if you've seen photos, but I'll, I'll find you some, of the, the rooftop garden where intermission was and where you could go in oh, and, and smoke yeah, and, yeah. and have that in between a movie that only went for <laughs> an hour. They had an intermission back then. And um, the stories there and they had bands that came to Aubrey and, you know, the Beach Boys played there and Roy Orbison played there and there's now, would that so all many... have been in that Cinema One? Cinema that, One, yep. Beautiful... So it was only Cinema One um, and then two cinemas in the, in the 70s and then in the 80s we got three and four um, and five and then six <laughs> and then the 90s saw um, seven eight and then um and nine so nine yeah cinemas nine now. cinemas now yeah. over those years and tony um the current owner um tony smith his grandfather um bought it then and his father um and they also owned the drive through cinemas in Wodonga and Thaguna right, as well. Right. Yeah, so really passionate about the movie industry as well and bringing it to a regional location. Yes. And that's why it's worked so well because of the passion behind the Smith family and and wanting to bring the quality that you get in the city to the country. Yeah. And um, that still resonates today. And it's fair to say that you've thrived in the, in the job. I, <laughs> I remember you 
as a marketing um sales yeah sales advertising sales and, yeah, advertising. It yeah. Was, it, it was very much you were a go to person promotions yeah promotions this yep. is our, my early days in, in radio and and then you've you've moved to the general manager position yeah, now yeah so the general manager prior to me I'll never forget he um he once said to me um he was introducing me to some some um people and he goes this is Kelly um whatever she wants goes and I thought oh wow okay <laughs> he, I, I've, I've made it <laughs> he values me and he can see and that and that's because I just found that bringing things to an experience um, with people in movies um, was what I wanted to do and you know movies such as Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings uh, um, having the dress ups and, and having the staff um, become part of that movie experience is really what I love to do and decorating the cinema and like squeezing money out of my bosses to go come on <laughs> this this is going to add people want to come and do this again and um, yeah that was that was where I I found my passion and then being able to involve local businesses as well in it um, was really exciting as, as part of my advertising role. And then it just grew from there. Our marketing manager leaves, so left, so I took more um, of a role into that until we got a new one. And then um, I just I just sort of stayed in that familiar field of, of promoting movies. Mm. You and have to love it though. I mean, yeah. you, again, that comes back to the whole the, the passion side of things. Yeah. I don't think anyone can stay in... in, in a, a job or, or, or a kind of area if, for so long and do so well without no. having the passion yep. for it. Would that yeah. be fair to it say? It is. It is. There is a passion. There is a passion to get people to the movies and have that experience because it is fun and, it, and it's in a world that changes so rapidly, it's nice to be able to escape reality and, and just have fun um, or immerse yourself in a story and I think that's so important and I want to get that out and then I, I want people to experience because like there's so many people out there that still haven't gone to the movies and you know that's my purpose <laughs> I've got to get them there yeah to experience it yeah and it's a, a tough market at the moment as, as well before before we get to that and the changing industry um, I just want to focus a little on some of the perks of the of the job a lot of people <laughs> would think that it's a very glamorous kind of yeah. area to, to be in and you'd meet all of these stars and hobnob with some of the people in the industry. Has it been like that? Have you got to meet no, a lot I of have. people? I have. I've, I've met a few. I, I've met a lot of behind the scenes um, people, which are which is so interesting to talk to them about their experiences. And um, one of my highlights was um, was um, so. Obviously, James Cameron. Everyone knows James Cameron, and I'm going to say it's not him, um, but he's right hand man. A wonderful gentleman came into um, the cinema and he was his um, cinematographer and and basically built cameras and and casings to for him to be able to film underwater for the Titanic and and everything and he was and then James Cameron's done a lot of documentaries as well and, mm. and he came and went and he'd go I want to fly a helicopter at 20 meters really fast and I don't want the camera to shake and this guy would go okay give me three months and he would go James would go I give you two weeks <laughs> And and he'd he'd build this case and his stories were interesting and and you know hanging upside down o- over the Serengeti or, or or where he's going it was just mm. amazing to hear his stories and he was so humble and and normal and I guess that's the most surprising thing when you think about these um, meaning these people they they are they're just humans and they're normal and um, so that was that was a big highlight and again. I I did briefly meet Hugh Jackman and I have to say he is as nice as what oh, he good. is in real life than what you see and no dirt on and that was then. that was very cool <laughs> and um, I'm fortunate enough to go to movie conventions the international movie conventions I, I've been to about six this is my seventh year now and they're fantastic because um, lots of interesting directors and actors do talking there and and getting sneak preview of what the um, yeah upcoming movie slates like it, it's really exciting so that's the glamorous side of it but it's very few and far between <laughs> i remember um 
we had the launch for was it called the barbecue? Yeah, a, yeah. It's a movie with Shane Jacobson, Shane Jacobson Manu. and he and Manu, and they are all fan, all fantastic. And I guess I forget about things like that because. Um, as soon as something happens, you have to think six months ahead, what am I going to move on to? And so, um, yeah, but that was a really fun experience to have um, four cinemas full of people all going to watch the movie at the same time and yeah. and prepping that and, you know, talking to council about parking and um, rolling out the red carpet and, you know, how we how what happens if everyone wants popcorn? <laughs> And and just yeah, managing all those sort of things is is really exciting. And yeah, loved it. And I have a really strong team behind me that can help me do that. Yeah, what's brought you most pride while you've been there? I know that, for example, the international film festival that you do every year. That's yes. that's just a, a wonderful event, and it has so many films that most people just wouldn't experience in the cinema. Is that the thing that brings you the most pride? Do you know what? My most pride was bringing our Flicks for the Chicks to to Albury where it was happening in the cities where a chick flick was happening and they'd have a girls' night out and you'd get a cocktail and a drink and a goodie bag and and all of that. But I wanted to take it one step further and and raise money for a local charity. And so um, we'd pick a charity and we'd sell out. And I remember my first one, um, my boss at the time going, this better work. If it doesn't work, it's a, it's a waste. And I was, I was so nervous. And then we sold out. We sold out in, in less than a week, I think. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is great. And then it was like, when's the next one? When's the <laughs> next one? And I do, you know, do you know what's really strange is being in the industry, um, back in the 90s, there were so many chick flicks and it was it was rife. It was fan. It was fifty-fifty male movies, female movies. It's not that anymore. And I have to wait. <laughs> I'd have to wait for a good chick flick to come to do these events. And and um, before before COVID, we would do about two or three a year. And and over the years that we did, and we probably raised about forty forty five thousand oh, for local amazing. charities just from these movie events. And you know, I ta- I'm really happy with that. Yeah. 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 That's probably the thing that brought me most joy. It was hard <laughs> talking to businesses about donating um, prizes and everything you know it had a good word behind it and a lot of female owned businesses were really happy to um, to donate their services as prizes and and gift bags but there's the, you know there's a general manager packing 200 um, goodie bags the night before you know uh, that that was my job I I had to do it so, yeah yeah well I mean it's interesting because um Certainly in previous years and decades, going to the cinema was the only way to watch a a lot of these movies. And then obviously you had the home video explosion with Blockbuster and Mm -hmm. all the rest of it. Now that's gone. Now, of course, it's as as easy as pressing a couple of buttons on the TV. And often it's new release movies that are only a week or two um, from being in the cinema and sometimes they don't even go to the cinema they yeah. just go straight to streaming so how difficult is it now to, and do you have to think of new and different ideas to yeah. get people in do you know uh, one of the best things about going to the movies is the social interaction and that's one of the reasons if not them it is the main reason why people go they they want to be with their friends or their family and they want to experience something together and I you can't get that at home. You can't. You can watch a movie at home and you can think it's fantastic and have the stereo and all that. But having that joint experience is, is what makes the movie so fantastic, as does the size of the cinema screen. And that's the important thing. And that's why cinema is still alive and well, because people want to interact with other people and see this joint experience. And, and that's where it's changing, where Gold Class came into it and um, our kids cinema came into it, that we've got to create experiences that bring people out of their homes and back and back into, you know, <laughs> society and, and having this joint experience. So that's evolved. It's not just going to the movies and grabbing your popcorn, which hasn't changed, mind you, in the the 17 years that I've been there. The popcorn is still the same and I, and I love that. Um, and everyone, it's different than the popcorn you make at home. <laughs> Actually, I've got um, to ask you this. I have to. I'm contractually obliged um, to ask you this question um, on behalf of everybody. Um, this is this is the only controversial question I'll ask in the uh, the journey. 
why is the candy bar so expensive? Um, well, I, I can, I'm more than happy to answer this, is because we don't make any money off movies. <laughs> gotcha. We don't make any money off movies, <laughs> gotcha. so we have to make movies something. And yeah, getting that popcorn and coke keeps the cinema open. So everyone knows. Everyone knows what they they're, they're going to get into. It's it's the same all around Australia, but it's always intrigued me. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, so if a movie's on for a long time, you you, you get to make a bit more. But um, a lot a lot of the percentage of that ticket price goes back to the distributor, yeah. which yeah. goes you know to the filmmakers and everything. And and then from our little percentage, we've got all the running costs and and everything of of getting a movie. So there, there's no money made. <laughs> Is it harder um, to make money now because of? streaming and everything or is it, uh, are things going well still in the industry? Yeah, it is. I mean, we've hit. There's no there's no word of a lie that we weren't hit um, and we were hit hard and we're still recovering now. Um, oh, but of the passion was it w- it guys. was yeah, it it was I I had many a sleepless nights in there and and just trying to stay positive because I feel like I am a positive person but it was hard it was hard to keep the the glass half full <laughs> so to speak in that time. Um, what did you do for that period? So uh, uh, refresh my memory. How long were you closed for across um, the period? Yeah, so we were closed for April, May, June, July, August. So five and a half months. Um, and we opened for, I think it was six days, and then we had to close again for another six weeks, and then we opened for a month, and then had to close again That's for about a month. Devastating. It just it just kept happening, and um, it was hard. The only highlight I had during that time was our renovation. We'd had um, Tony had planned this renovation and had been planning it for about seven years. Being a heritage listed building, we had a lot of hoops to jump through to do do all those things. Um, and we were going to do it while we we're open. And I I laugh still imagining how. <laughs> That was going to happen. But I had a plan. I don't know if it would work. I don't care. I'm, I'm glad I'm never going to find out if it had worked. Um, because when we closed, we had this purpose and that was, we're going to open. Let's open with this amazing transformation. And so, um, yeah, that that was the thing that got us through. Um there was a lot of lot of phone calls to, you know, emails to my staff to make sure that they were all right um, and to keep them in the loop about what was happening. Um, had some going out of date chalk tops. <laughs> 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 Rang the staff and say, who wants a chalk top? Um, had a little like here's my number, text me when you're out the back and had a little drive through. They wind down the window and I chuck a box of chop tops in their car oh, and off they go me. and then I get another text message. <laughs> no, um, I didn't. Um, that, was, that was my under-counter bootlegging operation happening at the, <laughs> at the cinema while we were closed. Um, but, yeah, so the industry itself is still struggling and, and again, we thought this year was going to be amazing and, and it had the potential of being a, another massive year with, um, you know, coming off the bat of, of Avatar and then having Barbie. Um, what an amazing experience. And then the writers' strike happened and the Actors Guild went in there as well and and that that really set pause again. But it's it's so worth it. They had to. They had to do what they did and and um, all of us in, in this industry are supporting that and so glad to see the end of it. But, yeah, that was another hurdle that we had to come across. So the, the potential for us to get back is, yes, we are. We're not going anywhere. Yeah, well, that's um, good. But, but when we get back to there is, is another story. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, enough yeah. of the cinema. Okay. Sort of deep dive into your character, Kelly. <laughs> Okay. What's your philosophy of management? My philosophy of management? Oh, that's a good you question. You have to manage a lot of people. How many yeah. people do you have at the yeah, cinema? Yeah, so um, I think I have 92 at the moment. Um, I know. It's a lot. It's it's very different philosophy now than it was um, five years ago. Um, I've always been in a management role and I think – I, I came from Nirvana where we had one, one store and we actually opened another three while I was there. So I had four stores to manage and, and staff and, and young staff as well in that industry. So I really wanted to do, I guess, a monkey see, monkey do type approach where um, I, if, 
I clean, <laughs> so, you, so you can clean. And I think a philosophy in my is a coaching type philosophy and I really like that value in, in a manager where um, – you can you can get in there and you can let them sometimes you've got to let your staff stumble so that they can see that that's that's the way it is done um and yeah i guess does that sort of answer your it's <laughs> question? a lot of younger i mean it's yeah. difficult i would i would imagine in in your industry and in fast food for example retail where you do have to deal with younger people yeah. and by their very nature you know they might not be as settled as as it would be working no. with a group of of, of adults Sometimes or it's people their who first are quite job a bit older as well. Yeah, so it's are you mindful job. of that? We are, and and we have to consider that when they when they come on. Um, some of them have never used a mop. Um, <laughs> I know, I know. It should surprise me, but it, it doesn't. It, yeah, it's they haven't used a mop, so we have to we have to teach them how to vacuum, and we have, to, and that's the step. So there is that sort of learning process when a person starts um, about you know how quiet and timid they are, and then what they're going to you know or how confident and and um, boisterous they are, and and then you sort of mould your training training around that. But I do um, spend a lot of time on our, our training documents to see how we have to keep modifying and changing them to the to the kind of um, workforce that, that's coming up because a lot of our workforce is casual and also a lot of them are yeah are under the age of twenty two. So yeah, mm. yeah. Um, now I want to touch on the overseas trip. So you're saying a lot of your focus on work has been to save up enough money to head overseas. Yeah. And um, and you've done that a number of times, as you said, through the years. So what was the highlight of your overseas trips and you it's know, quite what did that funny. Teach it's you? based on a movie. So I went with a friend of mine um, who you know, Ali Bradley, and we watched a movie called The Way. And um, Martin Sheen was in it and his son was walking what I had never heard of before, the Camino de Santiago, which is a pilgrimage walk from um, the east coast of Spain, from the French Alps through to the um, west coast of Spain. So the length of Spain. Um, and it's a pilgrimage that people do to find themselves, I say in inverted Classic. commas. Yes. Um, some, some find it a very religious experience. Um, but this movie was was amazing because the dad was doing it because his son had passed away and he wanted to his son to complete this. And the characters he met on the way and the transformation he had with him himself was, was really beautiful. And we sat in the cinema and Ali said, let's do it. And I went, yeah. And that was it. And then the next week we met up and she's like, I was serious. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. And she's like, yep. And I went, okay, we're doing it. So researched a lot. And then I went, if we're going to do it, we need to do it for a purpose. Um, let's create a charity and let's raise some money. And um, the care accommodation, Hilltop um, care accommodation at – um, the hospital was was building an area and was very newly established and so important for this region. Um, and we went, well, let's let's raise some money for them. So we approached the Fight Cancer Foundation and and said, this is what we want to do. And they're like, yeah, sure, because I'm sure they get so many people saying, I want to raise money. Um, and then Ali and I set a target of of I think five grand each, and we said, "Hey, we know enough people in Aubrey. Let's let's approach some businesses and let's do a movie night and let's do all this." And um, we created a blog and everything. And then we're like, "Oh, so we've got to work, work, walk. What are we going to do?" And so it's a seven hundred and forty kilometer walk. Um, going all the way okay. over to Spain, they usually say about 45 to 50 days, but we didn't have that time. I, you know, I was taking annual leave to do this. Um, so we allowed us um, 40, 35 days um, to walk and we said, yep, we can do this. We can do 25 kilometres a day. Um, and they have these um, like hostel type accommodation just for the people doing the walk over there and they're you know they're like five euro or sometimes you might find free and when they're free that i'm telling you that there's a reason why they're free um but but let's do this <laughs> so we planned all this thing and we get over there on our first day i nearly died 
I nearly died. It was atrocious. We were walking in this extreme heat. It was in summer, <laughs> the end of July, August, uh, end of July, and it was summer. And it was so frigging hot that I had to stop and Ali had to traipse through this mountain to this farm to see if she could find water for me. Oh and I God. went, I don't, I don't, this is day one. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And um, it was, it was hell. It was hell. And then um, we made it to our hostel and we met all these amazing people from all over the world. And they were so amazed that they met two Aussies that had flown and this was, and we were going to do all of it because these people in Europe would come and do a week or, or, mm-hmm. or so of it and then go home and come back in six months' time and do the next part. But we haven't got that luxury because we live so far away. And so then the next day we're like, okay, let's let's put on our backpack that weighed six kilos <laughs> and keep walking. And I I have to say 35 days um it was the most amazing thing I've done in my life I I found you know Ali was wa- walking for different purposes for me and I I didn't know why I was walking I just wanted to see if I could do it and I did and and I gained so much self-confidence and um self you know, at ease with myself, it's okay. It's okay to feel anything you want to feel because that's what you do. And I think that's what I got out of it the most was the confidence in in feeling for myself and knowing that I can achieve hard things. That's amazing. Yeah, and we raised $33,000 for... I would have given up on that first day. <laughs> I would have, I would have yeah. been on the plane. <laughs> yep. On our last, on our second last day, we had another moment where it was pouring down rain and I was so upset that we were walking and it was raining on our last day and it was dreads and, and all of that. And I said to Ali, oh, I wish it wasn't raining. And she goes, really? I feel like the rain's here washing away everything and... And cleansing us ready for our last day. And it was such a difference of of attitude between the two of us. And I went, I'm just going to think that because that's amazing. And then I had the best day. And it's just as simple as that. And that mm. and that's what mm. this walk taught me. And um, hardest thing I've done in my life, best thing I've done in my life. Yeah. And I'm really proud of it. And we have a Chicks Walk for a Cause kid children's room up at Hilltop that, that we were able to um, help build with our $33,000 donation. Oh, that's so, amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So, yeah. That was great. Um, stopped off in, in China for two days on the way home to recover. Um, got back on a Saturday and started work again on the Monday. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> we saw feet, I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh, my feet. But do you know what? Once a year I watch The Way just to get that feeling back of, of why it all began in the in the first place. And, yeah. and I love that. And do you know what I love even more is that it was a movie that made me do it. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, it's, It had to be. It yeah. absolutely had to be. So uh, look, looking back at your journey, would you have changed anything or have you been perfectly happy with the way that it's evolved and all the things that you've learned from that yeah. first time that you started watching movies back in the day? Yeah, I think um, oh, I, can't, I, I feel like you can't have regrets in life because if you do, change it. Um, you can you can change no matter how old or young you are, no matter how difficult you think it may be. You can make a small step to change things, and and that's what I think. Um, and it's probably been the last ten years since I've done the Camino that I've really, really um, felt comfortable in that. And so, yeah, I am happy. I'm really happy with what I've achieved, and I'm really happy in the direction that I'm helping the cinema go, um, especially to um, through this time. I'm beyond proud of myself for getting that business through. COVID. I I took over on November 2019 as general manager, and then oh, on man. on the 23rd of March um, 2020, I had to um, call staff, and I called them. I called the the. We probably had about 65 staff at that stage. Um, I I called them to say, hey, this is what's happening, um, because yeah, and that. <sighs> No one had gone through that experience before. And so I'm really proud of, of getting us through there. And I couldn't have done it without the support of um, of Tony, um, my my boss. He's he's an amazing businessman. And um, I've learnt so much from that time. Even though I've been at the, at the cinema for 17 years, I've mm. learnt so much since 2020 from Tony that I'll take 
into everything, every aspect of my working life. Well, funnily enough, just uh, looking ahead, you know, five, ten years, I mean, do you see yourself working yeah. at Regent? For for the foreseeable future I in do. the industry? Yeah, yeah, I do. I really feel like there's so much more we can do and I want to do and I'm really looking forward to doing it. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you're a great example for people that, you know, if you do find yourself in an industry and a, and a job that you're passionate about, if you work hard... yeah. And it, it is about that. Remain passionate, you, then then you'll achieve great things. I, I didn't go to uni. I did, sorry, I lie. I went to uni for a year. I was going to become a teacher, um, but my social life was more important, so I left <laughs> uni. <laughs> and um, so I've built myself up into a general manager of, of Regent Cinemas, which is you know such a a well known and strong business in the in our region, and I, I'm really proud of that with no formal education um so you can do it and and i love telling especially young people that you do yeah you can do it put your mind to it you can do big things last few questions um now if (laughs) this is a this is a standard question that we ask on the journey to wrap up if you're able to invite three people to your dinner party who would they be and why they can be dead or alive if at least one of them isn't from the movies i'll be disappointed um i know i know that so nelson mandela Okay. Yes. I I just want to hear his words of his life experience and and how his wisdom he's he's such a a wisdomous can I say that person and and the life that he went through to come up on top so he's definitely That's there. Number one. Yep. Yeah. Um. Do you know what I reckon? I'd have which director would I have? I reckon I'd have Steven Spielberg. Yeah, he'd be so That's interesting. Solid. That's a solid yeah. entry, I think. James Thanks. Cameron was the other one that you were yeah, pondering. Yeah, I know, but I I just think Steven Spielberg has has changed so much over the years um, that I that I'd want to know. Yeah, that's and, fair. And um, who else? Do you know what? I reckon Oprah Winfrey would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Three. Can I only have three? That's yeah. Bad. You can only have three. I'm happy. Okay, with Oprah. I'm starting I mean, with those three. Um, I'm really chat. happy. I know, wouldn't it? Just, just the stories that each of them. And do you know what? I wouldn't have to talk. I would just be happy to listen to those three bantering about life. I would just learn so much. So yeah. Uh, sweet or savory? Um, no, this I'm, is good because of the candy bar. Yeah. You know, you've got. You, you can choose whatever. Do you know there. what? You eat the chocolate off the choc top and you dip it in the popcorn is always a good tip. That's As crazy. is pouring your uh, Maltesers into the popcorn box and letting it all <laughs> melt together and, and doing all that. So I'm a sweet and savoury by the sounds of it. But no, I'm more of a savoury girl, but I was definitely sweet. Um, yeah. As we get older. I know. It changes. I know, I know. Cheese becomes life, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Exactly. And finally, and this is perfect for you as well, we always ask a recommendation, whether it's something you're reading, watching, or, or listening to. So give us a recommendation of something that we should, we should okay. watch no, movie-wise. What, oh, watch movie-wise. Oh, I was going to say, oh, I'm listening to this great podcast at the moment. You can say that but, as well. You can give um, us a couple. Ah, oh, movie that you should watch. Do you know what? I am going to say one of the movies that I just put on and it, my mind goes blank and it's it's such a simple movie that is funny and heartfelt and has a love story and has a little bit of drama and yet will make you go, do you know what? That last two hours was what really it? nice. It's Crazy Stupid Love. Crazy Stupid Love. It is um, Steve Carell, Julianne ah. Moore. Oh, right. yes, yeah. I've seen that movie. It is, that it was is, fun. It's not, I'm not, I'm, you, there's so many movies I could tell you to watch because of the story and the, um, you know, Hidden fi- Fingers. Hidden Figures is another one of those ones that everyone should watch and, and you know, be educated on. Um, but also, you know, get a lesson out of it. This movie, you're not going to get a lesson out of it, but what you are going to find is that you're going to have a really nice moment and sometimes it's just the simple nice moments in life that that make you want to continue on. And so that one will take away all the thoughts in your head and you'll just be entertained and that's what movies are about, being entertained. 78% on Rotten Tomatoes. Good choice. Thanks. Good choice. Thanks. Kelly, it's been an absolute pleasure listening to your inspiring story, to be honest, and it really does show um, how much you can get 
out of passion for for an interest, and obviously intellect and uh, and great uh, character qualities as well. But the passion is the thing that has always come through oh, for thank me you. Um, with my interactions with you. I don't think there's anyone I know who's more passionate about what they do than you. So thank you so much <laughs> for sharing your journey with me, Kelly Davis. Thank you. Thank you for having me. 